What is going on everyone? Welcome back to Farwell Fishing Channel here. Uh, welcome to all the new people that are that are checking out this RT198P boat review video and welcome back to everyone that has been subscribed. Uh, really appreciate y'all. If you haven't already, go back, go hit that subscribe button, like, comment, let me know what you want to see. If you are interested in picking up a Ranger boat in general or specifically the RT198P, something that I can personally speak to, go ahead let me know. Subscribe down below, add some comments, and I'm happy to go ahead, go in depth. I have some things planned already. Um, but let's go ahead, let's get into this video. It's been a hot minute since I've posted, because uh, I haven't had a boat. And I've been able to go out the past two weeks. I've had this boat for two weeks now, taken out three times already. Um, and I'm just gonna go through a little bit about the things that I like about the boat. And then we'll go through some things that, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've had some challenges with the boat so far. Uh, that we're still trying to go ahead and get worked out. So I'm gonna give you a real honest review. Uh, again, keep in mind, this is about a two week time period, taken out three times so far. So let's go ahead, let's dive in. Let's look at this beautiful boat and we'll catch you here soon. So first let's dive in. We'll start at the front of the boat and then I'll work our, we'll work our way all the way back. Just to go ahead and first start off, I will say that when I ordered this boat from Ranger, this has been a common thing that everyone's going through right now. No matter what you're, if you're looking to buy anything, a car, electronics, boats, right? Like COVID's completely just wrecked everything. I ordered this boat in mid-February. They told me that it would go ahead and would be here May 17th, which was the date that uh, as soon as I ordered it, a couple days later it said May 17th. A couple weeks go by, I go ahead and uh, get a call that, hey, your boat's actually gonna be here on the 19th. I said, oh, a couple days later, no big deal. Like actually no, of April. So I was like, wow, that's very interesting. Okay, great. So now I have my hopes up that it's gonna be here April. Wasn't here. It showed up on May 17th. Dealer was a little bit backed up uh, with all the boats that were coming in. Uh, and so I picked my boat up two or three weeks after that. Uh, so I've had this boat. It's today's Sunday. You would never know. We have a tropical storm that's been, that just came through this morning. We're supposed to get some more rain later. Uh, I'm down here in North Carolina. And uh, so, I've had it, it'll be three weeks this upcoming Wednesday. So I've had it about two and a half weeks now. So we'll go ahead and we'll walk through and I'll walk through how I ordered this boat, what I did. I did a lot of rigging to save myself, honestly, thousands of dollars. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's dive in. So I was just going ahead and was uh, editing this video and I thought of something that I didn't go ahead and mention. On the 2021 198Ps, you will notice that the welds are completely covered all the way down. Normally, you see this right here, this is all exposed welding. So it's all the way from here. It starts under here as well, which I obviously have the keel guard. You go ahead on the other side and right here as well. I'm sorry, the lighting isn't the best, but you can see the whole entire thing, all the welds are completely covered, which is really, really nice. It makes it look so much better in my opinion and something that I'm really happy about. Head up here to the front of the trailer. You got your plug, and then you got your uh, your harness to go ahead and connect to your truck. So far, pretty happy. Toes really, really nicely. Diving in on the bow. We have 80 pound Minn Kota Altrax. I had this on my last boat, my Lund, and I absolutely loved it. So I went ahead and I bought another one. And honestly, through Ranger, this motor, at least last year or two years ago in 2019 when I ordered it, it was 2,300 bucks. And at least at Cabela's now, it's up to 25, almost $2,600. Order it directly through your Ranger, I got it for 1,700. So definitely save some money there. I was gonna go ahead and buy it separately and install it myself to save on some money, but it just made more sense for me to order it directly through Ranger. So 80 pound Minn Kota Altrex on the bow. We'll go into something that I've already been having to deal with. First time I go ahead and I took it out, there was rattling in the head. Went ahead, took it back to the dealer, and I said it was cavitation down into the trolling motor, uh, in the trolling motor. It wasn't cavitation. There, it, it was a motor, it sounds like there's a motor that was up in here, and it was basically making just like a ticking noise. I wasn't even on the pedal, uh, and, and I would release the pedal, and you could just hear it, it was like it was winding down. It's like a motor on the inside, just wasn't fully stopping. I don't really know, it's the best way that I can go ahead and describe it. Since then, I went ahead and tightened the prop. They said try a different prop. I did that and it still was doing it. Took it out this past weekend uh, on Friday and it was okay. 
not a big deal it's working fine for now uh, but that's something that I was having to go ahead and, and, and get looked at uh, they weren't really sure what was going on uh, had me try a different prop nut but still doing it so uh, but it's not a big deal for now it's working so I ain't gonna complain coming off the all tracks I also installed a TH Marine trolling motor handle which was so easy all you literally have to do is back this out right here you literally push it through see right there you can kind of you just grab it from there pull it out take the little nut off the the old one take electrical tape join the two together pull the new one through add the uh little ball on this and then you're done it is so easy love this handle the g-force handle um super super happy with it you know the one that comes with it is okay had it on my old boat but i did it right on this ranger Coming around the other side real quick, got a TH Marine prop eliminator put on that. We come up here as well, you got a tool holder, you got your lights, your trim, and then your hookup for your trolling motor, which I went ahead and I routed through here so it's completely out of the way. Otherwise, this cable is just completely dangling around everywhere. Went ahead and uh, uh, electrical taped it and wrapped it, tucked it under there really nice so it looks nice and clean. And then got the uh, TH Marine right here, troll jacket on there, keep all the cables nice and taut, nice and snug, and completely out of the way. We come up to the bow. We'll come up to the bow here. I got the bicycle seat. One thing that I will say that I don't like about, and this is something that you might be able to order, but it wasn't brought up to me, this pedal sill seat does not adjust and I'm five foot eight and this is definitely made for someone that's at least six foot. This thing is very, very tall, so I can't even use it. Uh, but I did put it in here just because it came with the boat. So that's something I just want to say. If you are not a very tall person and you are vertically challenged like myself, go ahead and take a look into an air ride pedal sill seat or something that you can go ahead and adjust, which I'm going to end up doing. Come up to the bow. We got a 12 inch Garmin 126 SV Ultra. We got that paired with the GT54 UHD transducer on the trolling motor. We come and go ahead, go back here. And uh, actually before I get there, I will say, this is something that I rigged myself. I will get into it a little bit later, but rigging this boat is a giant pain in the you know what. Just because of the way that they have the wires going. People that, if you have a 2020, you have a 2019, 1817, the way that they have wired these boats and routed the wires is different. I have multiple people that have Rangers, uh, a 2017, a 2020, and my 2021 is completely different. So um, I'll get into that a little bit later, but just know 12 inch Garmin, Garmin fits no problem. Um, this this um, plastic here that's connected directly to the fiberglass, I will say it's probably about, I think it, I measured about a quarter inch thick. I went ahead and put an inch thick uh, piece of fascia board behind this just to strengthen this up. This thing is rock solid. It is not going anywhere. It's This is literally a $40, I think it's the Bass Pro Lockdown mount, dash mount, and it's 40 bucks. I had a Decket mount on my previous boat and it was a hundred bucks. So I got two of these for 80 bucks um, and I have the same exact mount on the console, which or on the, uh, yeah, at the console, which you'll see, uh, which you'll see here in a little bit. Going ahead, looting, loop, moving back, got the pedal here. I went ahead and got a cool foot. I like to go ahead and fish barefoot. Uh, this thing's got some, some grip to it too. I really, really like it. It's the first time I've ever went ahead and put one of these on my boats and I'm really happy with it. Go ahead, giving away here. Obviously, as you saw in the preview here, I do have power poles on this boat. I went away from talons um, and got power poles. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. There's my down switch and there's my up switch. And uh, that's currently what the front of the office looks like. All right, let's open this up. You will notice this rod locker, the gunnel comes out pretty far. It's pretty much straight up. It will not stay up. So eventually one thing that I'm gonna wanna do, I'm just gonna hold this with my foot here, uh, is I'm gonna put a gas piston on that side just to keep this rod locker up. So I can get my rods up and I'm not gonna go ahead and break any of them. I went ahead, the first thing that I did and this looks like a mess right now because I have some rods went out this weekend, but is I took out the, the rod butt holder here. One thing that I was trying to do, which I realized you cannot do, is take out these rod tubes. 
this whole thing, this metal right here, this aluminum, I hope you guys can see it right here, is a support for the front deck. You cannot take that out, or maybe you can, but you're probably gonna go ahead and have some support issues on your deck. Um, not really too pleased with the way that they went ahead. Look at, you can see, I hope you guys can see that, but right here, you know, they completely butchered mounting these inside the inside the, the rod compartment. I went ahead and when I went to go ahead and, and, and try to take that out, there was numerous times that you can see that they tried drilling those uh, rod tubes in there and they missed and they had to go ahead and re-drill and re-drill. Very, very sloppy work, was not too pleased with that. Um, I'm kind of bummed that this side rod, lock, rod locker don't stay up. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and add a gas piston. It's gonna be the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and order on my boat that I will go ahead and be installing. But just something to be mindful of uh, if this is a boat that you're interested in, you're looking into. Now let me say, this is a sweet boat. I'm very, very happy with it so far. Besides these minor things that I'm showing you, um, and we'll get into some other things that I've been having to deal with with my dealer uh, a little bit later in this video. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll get in the rod lockers. Lots of space. Really, really happy with the space in the rod lockers. We'll go ahead and I'll open this. This is the main side rod locker. Those that have a little bit older boats, or maybe they changed it in the 2021s. I think the 188Ps are the same layout, and the standard 188s are, I, I believe, are two rod lockers on each side. Don't quote me on that. Um, but again, I'm speaking for the 198P. So, you go ahead here, and this little one is a cooler. I currently have my bibs in here, I got some TP, a reel, some good old Cheez-Its, can't go wrong with Cheez-Its. Really, really deep, big cooler. I'm gonna use it as storage. I don't think I'm gonna really use it as a cooler. I personally wish that they would just keep make this a regular storage. You know, go ahead, cut this out even more, right? Like give yourself some more room, but it is very, very deep. I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, just as a regular, a regular storage compartment for myself. We go on this side, and this is where I got, again, you'll see this, these don't stay up. The gunnels come too far out where the, the, the side lockers do not stay up, so you kind of have to support it. This is where I have all of my, um, you know, I got my life jackets, I got a sweatshirt, I got a bunch of line, um, just a regular side storage compartment. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention is on the 2021s, the old 2020s, it only came with one rod strap on this side, which is absolutely ridiculous. On the 2021s, thankfully, they added a second one because I was talking to my dealer and I said, I'm going to want a second rod strap on this side. You would think it would be, uh, you know, common sense that you go ahead and put a second one in there who really only just uses one rod strap. So thankfully, the 2021s, it does come with it. We're going to back up here and we're going to open up this giant rod locker. I personally want to use this for storage. So that's why I have all of these boxes in the setter rod locker, and I'm not gonna use my rod locker. I am more so throughout the day getting baits than I am getting rods. So I rather use the center rod locker for all of my baits uh, versus going ahead and putting rods in here as well. One of the biggest things though that I will say that has been super irritating this whole time, and I actually hopefully just got it, I mean, it was fixed, is I came up here and this hinge, if you pull this hold rod locker up and you take the these gas pistons out, take these gas pistons out, there is rivets underneath here. When I say this thing was squeaking, it was the most irritating thing I think I've ever dealt with on a boat. It was so loud. From the factory, they never completely clamped down the rivets. Or if they did, the rivets backed out. Why they're using rivets now on these boats, I have no idea. Maybe they're super short on materials. Materials, they're doing whatever they can to go ahead and just get them out. But it's ridiculous. I'm dealing with the same thing in the back of the boat, which I'll show you in a little bit. But I think back there is more structural than it is these uh, the actual hinges on these. So uh, I will say that's something that I've had to get looked at. They went ahead, drilled out every single rivet, and re-riveted the whole box. So hopefully that fixes it for now. I won't have to deal with it. All right, heading to the console. I got a 10 inch Garmin 106 SV Ultra. I love that the new Rangers come with tilt steering. My Lund 
previously that I had did not come with tilt steering and I had to upgrade it for like 145 bucks. So I'm really, really happy that it comes standard with tilt steering. I got your switches, you got your build, you got your aerator, your pump in, pump out. You have an accessory switch. We have our interior lighting, our navigation, and then our horn, and then obviously our key. I did go ahead and add a ram mount. This is super awesome to go ahead and have because I have vessel view in this boat as well. So I just put my phone here and especially during the break-in period, I can watch my RPMs and I know exactly where I'm standing at all times. Just went ahead and uh, pre-drilled it and then put some screws in the side there. And that thing is solid. It's not going anywhere. Now, a little bit earlier, I mentioned the wiring in this boat. I will say, I will say that it has been Gosh, I am sweating so bad. It is so hot and humid out here right now. I will say that it has been, or it definitely is, one of the worst ways I've ever seen a boat wired, in my personal opinion. And here's why. So you go ahead and right back here, take a snake, right? You try to go ahead and you pull your wires all the way to the bow of the boat or all the way up to the console here so it comes out to your, bow, your, your uh, console graph. What you have to do is you either A, can try to take this cup holder out and get access to where the wires are, or you need to take this screw out, which by the way, they put a rivet here, so I couldn't even get this out when I tried to take it out, so I had to drill it out. And then they put a screw here. There's a screw. I thought there was a screw up here. Yeah, there was a screw right here, which I didn't end up putting that in there. Uh, and then there's a screw here. And after you go ahead and you get the screw out here, you have to come back, take a screw out here, and I had to take a flathead screwdriver and pop this panel back. And what I'll do is I'll try, if I can do it, I'll stop right here and I'll, put, I'll insert a picture to show you what the wires look like. But basically, what you have to do is you have to get the wires to come through this side and then they cut it to the left here. And you literally have like uh, probably a, a one and a half inch opening, two inch opening to be able to turn the wires to go down and then all the way up to come, you know, inside the console and then out to your graph. It was the biggest pain I've ever had to deal with trying to wire a boat. It is not as easy as just going ahead, trying to take a snake, have it come through, grab it underneath your console and feed it up because hopefully you can see that this is all fiberglass so you can't access up in here you have to take this whole entire panel back to get access to all the wires this is just a fuse panel you can take that thing out as well but to be able to get the wires back there you have to go ahead and take this out to be able to route the wires down left and then come up through the graph listen i'm i've gotten kind of handy okay ever since i bought my house people say you know when did you become so handy i said when i became a homeowner there's no other way to possibly go ahead and rig this boat. And if there is, and if you've done it before, you have a 2021 198P, I'd love to know how you went ahead and you took your wires and you routed them without having to head to take all these panels off because it was a pain. Um, I will say too as well, coming from the factory, there's a gap right here. They didn't completely tighten it down. This was an absolute mess down here. So I went ahead and re-drilled it and got it nice and snug where that is nice and solid and it's pushed all the way up. There's no gap here anymore. It's nice and smooth. Um, so I think what's happening is they're just trying to go ahead and obviously they're just trying to get out boats as fast as they can, which, you know, fine, but it's something that, you know, if I'm spending upper thirties low easily, you know, in the, you know, in the forties with all the accessories that I have on the boat, I'm expecting the boat to be pretty dang perfect, given that I just spent a lot of money uh, on, on a boat. I get it, there's gonna be some in, imperfections. You know, I, I'm really not trying to be like super nitpicky, but from the day before I even go ahead and I get the boat and I'm having issues before I even get it out on the water that I'm noticing as I'm going through and I'm rigging stuff, it's just kind of irritating. You'll go ahead and you have a, another storage box here, which I just have my paperwork, mercury manual, uh, scale, just some USB ports uh, or cables. Um, just so you know, this is not dry storage, okay? All they literally did is they just put this box in here, put some screws down there, water can still get in under here. So just for FYI for those of you, uh, what I'll probably end up doing is pulling this out, getting some sealant, probably putting some sealant around there so it's as dry as I possibly can get. But just so you know, this is not a dry storage. 
Moving over here, you have a passenger. You got four rod uh, holders there with a with a strap, which honestly, a strap is so big that I don't know, unless you're putting surf rods in there, it's really hard to get these things nice and snug down. Um, really, honestly, kind of a chintzy cup holder. I wouldn't trust this thing at all, but again, nitpicky stuff. I'm just giving my honest opinion. Go ahead and here are the, the Ranger seats, which honestly, when I first looked at this boat and I bought this boat, not seeing it in person because they were, they were all out. So I went ahead and did a lot of research and hopefully all of you who are viewing this video, if you've, you've liked it so far, or you're into this kind of content and you're really interested uh, and you want feedback, please go ahead and subscribe and reach out. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions. There's some Ranger videos out there, 198p in-depth videos. There's a couple, there's not a lot. So I'm really trying to go as in-depth uh, as possible to help you make a right decision for you if this is a boat that you're really really interested in looking into i'll provide some context at the end of this video as to why i decided to go with this boat let's keep going on middle seat uh i was looking into the console or the um coin box i wasn't going to spend 480 dollars i think it is on a coin box though maybe down the road i'll get it but i'm thinking for now i might make my own um, versus going ahead and having this middle seat. I don't really ever have three people or two additional people in here. So I'll probably rip this out and then put a, a, a coin box there. But overall, decent seats, pretty happy with them. I thought they were gonna be a little bit uncomfortable, uh, you know, riding, but they're actually pretty dang comfortable. They're not, they're not as bad as I thought. Right over there, right here, right there. You got another cup holder. That's actually a legit cup holder versus that little chintzy one there. And then you have your O handle and uh, which, you know, as I'm sitting here in my, you know, I had someone else here. Again, like, I swear this boat's made for people that are like six feet tall. Or if you want to lean forward, this thing's so far up. I wish it was like right here because you can actually hold on and stay lean back in your seat. But here, like, I, again, I'm 5'8". I have to lean forward to be able to hold on to that. And like, my arm is fully extended. It's just, it's not very comfortable. Again, maybe if you're, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, taller than I am, or you have a really you know, long wings, wingspan, arm span, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, it's just, I don't know. I feel like it could, could be held back a little bit more. I'm not going to relocate it though because I don't want holes in my boat. One thing that I wanted to mention that I wasn't really sure if I was going to like, but I love this. It's a remote uh, drain plug for your live well. Really, really happy with that so far. Um, I really, really like it. So you ain't got to worry about putting plugs in the back of the boat. Speaking of live well, we come right here and here it is really deep nice live well i put all of my call tags right here and it's completely out of the way you notice it's not no interference um really really happy with this live well haven't put any big fish in here yet this past weekend lost some giants but it is what it is absolutely love how easy this center divider is my old boats you know you have those those dividers where you know the same plexi you know or plastic you have to try to bend them and lock them in there such a pain this is beautiful love having that being able to pull that in and out um you know super easily super efficiently and just go ahead and throw it in a rod locker and it's completely out of the way um you go ahead and you have uh your pump in so you can go ahead and you're obviously filling your live well and then uh you have your aerator your recirc and then also you pull that and you have your pump out Oh, one other thing that I will say is they went ahead on these boats and they put these, okay? They put this in here, but why wouldn't you just go ahead and put that here that locks so you can lock that? Don't really understand. Again, it's little, but something like that that you'd be able to lock would be really, really nice. Same thing with back here as we go back to the back storage. It's the same exact thing. Oh, except these you can't even go ahead and completely latched down it's literally this just acts as a handle no matter which way you have it there's no latch down here to be able to secure this um, but pretty good size back storage um, i'm pretty happy with the size of these compared to previous boats that i've had again same exact thing more storage again they don't lock though kind of annoying you have your seat back here my lund did not have this little strap believe it or not this thing's pretty handy just having that as soon as i get it I pick it up, I go to put it in my truck, I go ahead and I shake it around, you know, trying to, I just like picked it up out of the boat, there's a screw in there. There's a screw on the inside and you can't get to the inside of this. It was literally inside the plastic. So they said they went ahead and they replaced the seat. If they did, great. I still hear stuff in there. 
Again, it's little, it's minor. I know people are probably gonna go ahead and shred me because it's like, oh, it's little stuff. But again, you know, you pay $40,000 for a boat and you know, you have little stuff like that that screws your stuff in there. It's just quality control stuff. Just stuff like that that's just kind of irritating, you know, where it's like, really? Like, how is that possible? I went ahead when I was wiring my front graph, there was foam all up in there. There were screws, there were leftover rivets. Um, you know, there were, uh, you know, the PVC tubes, uh, you know, when they drilled the, that was all in there. They didn't vacuum it out. Again, I'm just giving an honest review. It's little stuff. I do love the boat. Uh, I don't want to go ahead and have this be a super negative video because it's not. This boat has been great. I love it. There's just a few minor things that I got to go ahead and get figured out. All right, as we come back here, we have our battery compartment. I like this. I like that I don't have to reach down and try to find where my three bank charger is. So I can go ahead and that's my plug for my three bank charger. This is the one that came with the boat, okay? They ended up putting these two interstate batteries, 27s uh, is what they are, and they put them this way. Well, they were also, this is like a dealer thing though, but they were crooked. Like you go ahead and you look down here and one battery's pointed that way and one was kind of pointed that way. And then you have all this storage back here because keep in mind, the gas tank is under the seats now in these boats. So you have all this storage back here. With the batteries here, you got, you know, like this is storage. So all I ended up doing is putting some tubs here so I can use some storage. Uh, but I relocated the batteries back there, completely out of the way. Uh, overall, pretty happy. I uh, got these three-way terminal connectors. So I, you know, sometimes you go ahead and you tighten these down. These things are just so full on uh, one post. So I just went ahead and uh, got these for both negative and positive and have everything really nicely distributed uh, to certain terminals. Go ahead over here, this is the main power switch. Uh, out of the factory, just so you know, at least the way it this boat came rigged, that only controls your accessories and uh, for the boat. What I mean by that is it's your bilge pump, it's your live well, um, you know, it's your, your, uh, in, you know, one thing that I didn't mention was, uh, accessory light, right? So the one light that they have here, they don't, they don't include any lights on the inside of the gunnels, but you also have a light right here, which I don't have my power on, but this is a nice little light that did come with the boat. Um, but it controls that your motor and your trolling motor are not on that switch. So there's always going to be some power going to that. So one way to avoid that. To draw power, unplug your trolling motor or put your trolling motor on a switch, which is something I'm gonna mention now. I have, I just haven't installed it yet. So I will have my trolling motor on a switch um, and I will go ahead and honestly just leave the motor for now. I'm really not too worried about having the motor on a switch. Um, speaking of switches, I did go ahead and install a 80 amp switch here for, as we work our way back to the boat, to eight foot power poles. It is something that is recommended or it says to do it in the manual to put them to a switch. You hear about those nightmares where power poles go down on the highway, you accidentally hit the switch or you know, a hydraulic, maybe a hydraulic you know, pump fails or whatever it is and they go down, you ruin them. I didn't wanna have to worry about that. So I just went ahead, put it to a switch and uh, when I'm done for the day, I go ahead, you shut it off on the way home and when I'm ready to go to the lake, go ahead and when I get to the, the, the ramp, I go ahead and turn it on. So here's where I installed the two pumps. Got one power pole pump there, and now another power pole pump right back there. Pretty easy to install. If you have questions and if you're nervous about installing power poles, it's gonna save you about five to $600. At least that's what I was quoted, about 300 bucks to do for one. Um, I did them completely myself, no help. Um, and I feel pretty confident I go ahead and do it again on a similar boat, similar layout, uh, no problem at all. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead, feel free to reach out um, and I'm happy to go ahead and help. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's at Farwell Fishing as well on Instagram and I'm uh, happy to provide some, some feedback and, and help if you need it. And then we got this big bad beast right here, Mercury Pro XS. I'm gonna jump down. I have been so happy with this boat since I went ahead and I got it, especially with this motor on there. This thing is bad. Going ahead and getting full, having full tackle, full tank of gas, two power poles by myself 
I'm getting 58, I saw 59 miles an hour once, and the motor's not even fully broken in. So, I'm pretty dang happy. You're probably gonna ask, well, what kind of prop do you got on there? Stock prop from the factory, stainless steel, 23 pitch Tempest. Uh, I am super, super happy. This is a very, very torquey motor. I absolutely love this 150 Pro XS. Um, I had a Mercury on my last boat. I wouldn't go to anything else. I'm very, very, very happy with it. Now, it does lead me to something that I'm actively trying to figure out with my dealer. The steering. From the minute that I went ahead and I launched the boat, I backed it up. I didn't have power poles the first time that I, I brought it out. Put it on the dock. And I'm going out, right? Just going ahead. I'm about to start the, the break-in process. But I go to turn the right, and it's very, very gritty. It's the best way that I can go ahead and describe it. It is not smooth at all. Going to the left, I'm fine. And it's mainly when the boat is trimmed all the way down, or about a quarter to all the way down is when it does it. When I'm trimmed up, it's nice and smooth. Don't really know what's going on. I've brought it back to the dealer twice for it, um, and we can't figure it out, so... My boat will be going in. We're averaging one time a week since I got it, which is I'm, I'm bummed out about it, but you know, uh, I, I know they'll get it figured out, uh, especially because it's a brand new boat. We're going to get it figured out. I'm not going to just deal with it because uh, it's, it's not normal. So uh, overall, really, really happy. Very, very torquey motor. You will notice I went ahead and I got a six inch slide master manual jack plate. I didn't get the hydraulic mainly to save some money. From the factory, this thing has been awesome. This also makes it extremely easy to go ahead, and if you decide that you want power poles, it's as easy as going ahead and taking these bolts out from the ones that came with the boat and mounting your power pole bracket directly to the jack plate. So if you're interested and you're looking to get a boat, I've also heard that this jack plate's gonna help for performance. This boat planes so fast. You go ahead, you're not even getting on it full the way and the, the, the boat's already completely planed out. This thing wants to run. It wants you to run, trim up and throttle down. It just wants to go. It's a very, very fast boat, especially for, uh, you know, uh, almost a 20 foot boat. It's 19 feet, 10 inches, uh, you know, and uh, you know, it, for a 60 mile per hour boat with a 150, pretty happy with it. I did also go ahead and put bolt buckles on this. This does not come stock from the factory. You have to upgrade it. Uh, for uh, you know uh, the upgraded fishing package or whatever you can kind of see right here maybe right here it's kind of hard to see that yeah right there you go right here that was from the shipping cover when they went ahead and they strapped it down on both sides it's like that they completely scratched it up so I went ahead and got some touch-up paint put some touch-up paint in there you know whatever it's fine um, one other thing here I do have my transducer off the back I mounted the block, completely rigged this uh, this boat with all of the uh, the graphs that are on it. Put this block on there, sealed it, everything's good to go. Second trip out, my Garmin transducer ripped off the back of the boat and all that was left was this cable. I had the plastic mount that Garmin sent. I don't know how it's possible, I don't know why it happened, but the I came, you know, was headed back to the ramp for the day. I noticed the cable's flopping in the water, transducer's gone. I went ahead and got this very, very heavy duty uh, Garmin transducer and this thing is solid. I cannot move this at all. Went ahead and uh, you know got the GT56 transducer. Uh, you can't really find these transducers anyway. There is a shortage of parts, but went ahead and found it online and was able to go ahead and get, it was like, you know what, it was a hundred bucks more. Said screw it, bought the 56 and uh, I haven't been able to get out on it yet. Uh, and, and try it out, but so far got that routed really really nicely all the way up and right in fed it to the bow And that's good to go one other thing That I wanted to go ahead and mention is they have the another switch back here this is for your drain plug I was really wary. I was like, I don't trust that thing but you can see the plugs in and it pops out this thing has been solid. I have not had an ounce of water come in my boat while using that thing. And I do have plugs just in case if it does, uh, if it does all of a sudden start to take on water, just put the plug in. But uh, I will say I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. As I mentioned, I got two Sportsman 2 power poles, eight foot. Absolutely love them. 
So why did I go from talons to power poles? Well, I will tell you that these things are so light. Taking these out of the package, just carrying the whole box was like nothing. The talons, there is, they're so heavy. The sandwich brackets are big and bulky. And uh, like I said, they're just, they're just extremely heavy. There's a lot of like little bitty parts in those. These things are basically just on a piston, a gas piston with a hydraulic, right? And that's all they are, right? You don't have to worry about all these random little aluminum pieces that are built in like the talons. Um, you know, I will say that I've just, I absolutely love these power poles so far. I've, I've only used them twice. Uh, and I would pick these any day over the Minn Kota talons. Now the Minn Kota Raptor I was looking into, but I didn't really want to spend that money. Um, but overall, really, really happy with these things. Like I said, installed them myself. Pretty dang easy, so let me know if you have any questions on them. But that's pretty much it. Went ahead and the newer Rangers do go ahead and come with a, I think it's a Trail Star trailer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I did go ahead and get the spare tire um, and, and got the custom tire to match. That is standard though. So you go ahead and when you order Ranger Boat, it automatically comes with a spare tire. You are all set to go from there. One little thing too as well, comes with a tool holder right there, which is really nice. So that way you ain't gotta go all the way up to get your tools that are up there. If you're working on bringing some rods back here, it's something that my other boat did not have, which is really, really nice. It's something that I'm actually pretty happy with that, uh, that I have in this boat. Again, comes standard. Coming to the back, the boat does come standard with a transom saver, which is really, really nice. Uh, I thought I was gonna have to buy one again you know, Lund just being an expensive boat, it did not come with it, so I had to go ahead and order it. Uh, or I had to buy one after the fact, but really, really happy with this. Um, I did mention that I have Vessel View in the boat as well. Bought that, installed it before I took it out, and that thing is sweet. You can go ahead, you can make sure that you're dead on RPMs. You can check your engine hours, which is really, really crucial and helpful for uh, break-in. Uh, and uh, I'm very, very happy that I installed Vessel View. It is so easy. If you're ever hesitant about installing any of this kind of stuff, let me know. I'm happy to go ahead and help. Uh, but the directions are pretty dang self-explanatory. There's plenty of videos on YouTube to show you how to do it. And it's super, super simple. You can save yourself a lot of money, even if you're not super handy. This is all stuff that you can do yourself. Uh, so I'm really, really happy with Vessel View, especially putting on that ram mount. Um, we'll go ahead, we'll go to the side over here. I'm gonna show you some other things that come with the boat, which I have to get fixed or figure out because this boat comes with two USB ports and then your regular cigarette lighter, 12 volt, and neither one of them work. Went to go ahead, go out this weekend, was out on the water for about 10 hours, and I went to go plug my phone in because I was using Vessel View, and none of them work. None of the switches go directly to it. I imagine it's supposed to go right to direct power. If this is on me, you know, hey, I'll feel like an idiot. It is what it is, but I assume there's direct power to those, and uh, none of it will work. So uh, I got to go ahead and get that looked at. Got the boat as well and the uh, speedometer right up here would not work. Um, so they went ahead and they ran a new hose directly back to the motor and all of a sudden it started working again. So um, I will say with this front or with this console mount, this is very, very thin plastic. You will want to go ahead and put a backer board or like I said, I just bought a fascia board. If you're not familiar with what fascia, fascia board is, let me go ahead, go in the garage real quick. This is fascia board. You can find it in like the decking. Okay, it's an inch thick. Inch thick, went ahead and cut it to what would fit on the inside there, which <laughs> to be honest, I got really hung up because I wasn't paying attention. When I went ahead and I first went to rigged this boat. I was up to like 1.30 in the morning and just was so overtired, but so excited to be in my new boat that I just wasn't paying attention. Um, but like I said, those graphs are absolutely rock solid. This boat is awesome. It's my dream boat. I've wanted this boat for the past five or six years. I am so, so happy with it. Would highly recommend it. Let's talk about price really quickly. So these, this boat right here, with, and I'll be completely transparent with you. This boat right here, not as you see it sits. It did not come with the Garmin's. It did not come with the power poles. It did not come with the, the ram mount and the cool foot and all the accessories. It came, the boat 
the all tracks in the motor on the trailer as you see sit was 37.1 okay i went with this boat because going to a vexus i could not find a vexus under 45k so and i knew i was eventually going to want the power poles right and that was you know 2600 bucks right 2650 shipped and uh you know so like at then i'm looking close to a fifty thousand dollar boat i'm not i i couldn't do it i personally could not do it um so this is why i went with a ranger it's still a very great boat i'm very very happy with it they're just some minor kinks right they're just little things here and there that are bound to happen so uh you know overall really really happy with the boat super super excited to get out there some more and uh go pull us some some toads especially this past weekend we got on a pattern that could produce some seriously big bags hopefully i can get out there I was supposed to get out today but with the weather i mean i'm it's so humid right now uh and it's gonna start raining again here soon hopefully we'll be back out next weekend and we'll hopefully have a vlog coming up for you with us putting some big bass in that live well that ranger live well and uh breaking in right already got a few fish in the boat but i am stoked to have this thing in my garage i've waited for so long i'm super proud of it i've worked super hard to have a boat like this it's been worth it it's paid off another thing that ranger adds is these retractable cleats love it on my old boat well not my lund but i had a tracker and these things were always up rod got stuck completely snapped it completely retractable love that that's part of the boat um, one other thing that I'll say to go ahead and close this video out is I went ahead and put a keel guard on it. It goes all the way back. If you're interested, went ahead and you're going to want the 8 foot keel guard. Um, it's the one that will fit 19 to 20 foot boats. Given that this is 19 feet 10 inches, that's going to be the size keel guard that you're going to want. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I am super, super happy with this boat so far. The boat is awesome. There's just a couple things that I got to go ahead and get figured out. Other than that, I'm really, really happy with the boat. If you enjoyed this, if this was helpful, um, please go ahead and let me know. Uh, subscribe to my channel, would really, really enjoy that. Would really, really be appreciative uh, if you did that. Uh, if you're interested on how I mounted my graphs, if you're interested in how I mounted the power poles, um, the ram mount, uh, the um, keel guard, uh, I've done a lot to this boat so far. There's a couple other things I'm gonna go ahead and, and do it as well. But uh, if this is something that you're interested in, you want some, you want some help, feel free to reach out. Follow me uh, on Instagram, at Farwell Fishing. Subscribe to this YouTube channel below, and uh, we'll see you on the water, hopefully putting in some giants. And uh, maybe we'll get another one in the T-Rex costume. If you haven't seen that, caught a 10-pounder in a T-Rex costume on Jordan Lake, North Carolina. It was absolutely insane. I'll link that down below. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. Catch you on the next one.